Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to BWTM Sports Gaming. As you know, I do play a lot of football. You know, play your football on the football manager, PS or Pro Legion Soccer 2020, 2021 in fact, um, and also FIFA 2021. So you know I do career game, career mode, I uh, do a lot of football. I don't play it much, I do like the management side of things. As we know, England played against Italy in the Euro final. 55 years, 1966 was the last time England won a World Cup. But they won the World Cup then. England won anything since, unless you consider the Tour Noir with, uh, with uh, what's his name, Glenn Hoddle. So England scored early goal through Luke Shaw. And then from that, uh, Italy, as you, as typical as England, if you watch England play football, you always know you're on your seat in your pants. You always know at some point there's going to be an equaliser in these big, big games. And the equaliser came typically of England. But for me, I never understood why England scored the first goal. They never pushed on to score a second goal. In the second half, they just were quite happy to defend a lead. They didn't show that passion to go forward and try and win the game outright. Instead, they sat back and they plowed just like part of the bus. And eventually, Minucci scored and we went to penalties. I remember talking to Coach Chris about it beforehand. And as I saw Rashford and Sacco, Sancho, preparing to come on. I thought, these guys haven't played much. And I'm not making excuses. These guys haven't played much. Football. Now they're going to get brought on and they're going to take, end up taking penalties, I'm sure. So, sometimes I think the England manager is... has a certain freedom to do what they want to do. And other times, I think the England manager is told what to do. In this case, that lineup of penalty takers had Rashford. Let me take this. Look, let me let me turn this round now. Put this on here. Rashford, Sancho, and Saka. Rashford, Sancho, and Saka. Rashford, we know that's been in the news a lot, fighting for free school meals. Sancho, supposedly highly rated player, playing in Germany, on his way to England, supposedly going to play for Manchester United. And Saka has been playing brilliantly for Arsenal and has played very well at the Euros. All three of those guys are going to end up taking penalties. And you know, I'm going to be honest with you, I swear I'm going to be straight honest with you, I'm sitting watching this and I'm going to myself, as Rashford is about to put the ball down, I'm saying to myself, if this boy misses the penalty, that's it. And true to form, he gets up and misses the penalty. Then Sancho comes up. He misses a penalty. And then Saka comes up and misses a penalty. Three black players. One, two, three. Right at the end. Three black players. No Greenwich, who's this fantastic player. No Mal. Right? Two guys. Henderson chipped off the field quickly. No Sterling. So it's left a 17-year-old. Rashford, or 19-year-old, and Sacco. Now, to me, you know what's going to happen if this happens. You know if you put those three guys up there and they miss the penalty, what will happen? Sadly, this is England. And don't just look at football as an example, look at the mainstream media 
at how biased and how racist the media is in the UK. The disparity between black and white is very clear. It's always in the media, always in the media, always in the media, every day, every day, every day, every day. So for, for, for the media to come out and start saying, oh, we need to kick out racism, you're the point, you're the, re you're the reason of half this racism that's going on. The prime minister says, oh, you know, the behavior should be, uh, yeah, it's terrible behavior. Now, I'm sure if you want to stamp this that properly, it's racism act properly. You've got Big Brother. You've got the ability to see with all the cameras you've got around Wembley. You can't use facial recognition to pull out these people who were racist and acts of racism, beating up on people of colour. You can't pull these people out on your camera. Name them. Shame them. Put them in newspapers. You can't do that. Say so possibly can do. Boris Johnson is no angel. You know, some of the things he said in court, uh, in, in court, in parliament, have been absolutely disgusting. So it's very hypocritical for a government which is concerned pro racism to start talking about racist behavior from the fans leadership starts from the top and if your prime minister is one who inspires racists then this is where we're at i'm afraid to say and this will start a lot of conversation and i want to start conversation because if we don't start conversation then you have to you know but it was a team that played in that tournament a team that played in that tournament and a team that won that tournament and a team that lost in that tournament but it is what it is this is this is this is england and unfortunately this is what it is i'm going to show you something that i received today to show you the mentality of these people in england some of the some of these people in England, racist. This is where their mind is at. Now I've got this. I got this. I'm going to try and send it. See, so you can see. It. Let's put it here. Don't know if you can see that. You probably can't see that. It says just saw this here. See that? Basically, it says here. Just saw this on Snapchat. stay safe tomorrow guys okay and it says these ends have lost us the euros monday the 12th of july punish an n day july the 12th and this is what it says five points if you spit at an n 10 points if you punch an n 25 points if you steal an end's clothes, 50 points. If you drive into an end, 75 points. If you rape an end, 100 points. If you break into end's house, and 500 points. If you kill an end, points, points. That's the mentality. That's the mentality that is in some people's minds. That's the mentality. You see, and the only way these people will change or will think twice about their actions, you've got to beat in two ways. You're beaten by law. And you're beaten by money, making them pay. But by law. Now these people are banned entirely from football matches. That there's a law in place. But if these people are caught, they're banned 
immediately. No, also, where are they working? Also, it's no. They're putting in newspapers, name and shame. The newspapers need to get these people, name them and shame them. Like they did with that football manager, the racist football manager. They pulled up. He did a video. And then afterwards, they caught up with him. And they sorted him out. There has to be laws in place. And this is not law in place. I don't care what the FSA say about kicking out racism. Kick out racism by making prime examples of people. A lot of these people you see running around the streets doing the stuff that they're doing. They're in jobs. They're taking a day off work to do what they're doing there. They need to be taught a hard lesson. It's the leadership at the top good enough for that. So let's see what people are saying in the room. The Italian keeper went the wrong way when all Rashford did was wait. Didn't even set up properly with a fade. England should have downloaded the data and used it. This was a planned ritual to create a rape war. <coughs> a race war. <coughs> to be honest, I'm not surprised. It was also a hum humiliation um, exercise as well. I don't see a coincidence in this. Plus, England is an ungrateful nation anyway. These people are racist by nature. I understand and I do get what you're getting to the point there. Institutionally racist. That's what it is. To stop supporting a nation that doesn't care about you and a nation is stemmed from racism, from the royal family, and a nation that will turn their backs on you when it really doesn't go their way. It's true. I can't say it's not true. We've seen it before. Moni Torres says, stop creating beef, bro. It's the truth. It's not beef. It's the truth. It is what it is. It's not creating beef. It's a fact. I wouldn't be surprised if Rashford missed on purpose. An ungrateful nation. They go from racial abuse to Sterling for two years to cheer anyone. It had to be planned. I'm not surprised if it was planned, to be honest. Southgate lost us the game with oh, his over defending style of play. How the hell did he start the game with five defenders? This is a very interesting point. Look, defensively, he was fine. I wouldn't mind him being defensive and going on the counter. At the end of the day, ultimately, the second half. It's like he was set up to just to, let, to allow them to stall the game. England fans booed every other country anthem. The country is full of hate. Totally agree with you there as well. England was dull. Don't have a clue how to break Italy back line. Officially, I'm white, made of my fist as I see past colour. A lot of my mates are Trinidadian footballers and ex-footballers. Ah, I'm a treaty myself. You remember Stern, John? That's family to me. What the F? And some people say racism does exist in 2021. The people who say racism does exist are the ones that benefit from it. I'm telling you, the people who say racism does exist are the people that, and unfortunately, I say privilege. The people who are privileged not to have to deal with the racism and the people that haven't got the cojones or haven't got any feeling within them to make change. So as long as these same people are in there of privilege, then they can't make change. And these people of privilege should not be allowed to be in any forms, in any form of organisation about uh, a colour. Now, I'm going to say something. It's very interesting to people who are not of color right people that are of color and the people who are not of color can say what is racism or what isn't racism when those same people benefit from it and i'm not talking about those people that understand that the racism exists or those people who are conscious and understand and are quite embarrassed by their counterparts in the way they're behaving i'm not talking about them so don't even start saying oh you know what i'm not racist i've got black mates i don't want to hear that i'm not interested in that I'm talking about those people who are in positions of power and that can influence change. I.e. Boris Johnson. I.e. Pretty Patel. Not so pretty Patel. I'm not saying all England fans, but the majority of them are racist by nature, hence their bad estate. Yes, institutionally racist. England is institutionally racist. 
And anybody who does not support that theme of it being institutionally racist is part of the problem. Because until you acknowledge that there's institutional racism, then if you don't acknowledge it, then you're going to do nothing about it. So you're just as bad as the racists. So if you acknowledge there's a problem, you're going to try and do something about it. Or if you don't want to do something about it, that is. Yeah? So this isn't just about three black players that missed a penalty. Forget that. This is a worldwide thing. And when you've got people at the top that reflect that racism, then people feel it's okay. People feel it's okay. Brexit was an excuse for a lot of racist people to come out of the closet and speak and start spout in their mouths. That's what it was. That's what it was for me. And nothing will happen to them because the people in colour of this system and the people in parliament are racist themselves. You have a racist leader and will have racist presence. Well, you've just basically took the words out of my own mouth. Right there. England players took a knee. What are you talking about? No racism, mate. Wait, why did they take a knee? Because of racist actions. That's why it's racism. And people like yourself that say, there's no racism, mate. Let me ask you a question. How do you know there's no racism? So, a white guy putting his neck on somebody's, his, his foot on someone's neck. If all your life, all you have to do is turn up for a job, and you know what, I'm going to get a video, I'm going to play a video. Or, uh, there's a YouTube video out there called Whiteness. The privilege of whiteness. Let's look at that video. You know, it's like, the perfect example that would be looking at fire, never sticking your hand in fire, and looking at the fire and saying, fire doesn't burn. But people who stick their hand in fire get burned. And you tell those people that stick their hand in fire, fire doesn't burn. When you can sit, that's a privileged position to sit back and say, no racism, mate. Because it's people like you with thoughts like that that allow people that run around, do what they're doing at the ground, kicking and punching uh, people of another colour older than themselves and find it acceptable. Mate, I'm sorry. You're part of the problem, not the solution. No, not all are. Nobody I know from my local football club would allow this to happen. Stop the bullets and just let, let us all unite and keep our heads. Not as simple as that, mate. You cannot unite. You cannot unite with people that are animals. You cannot unite with them. The, you, you, the uniting thing is an illusion. It's an illusion. Ultimately, it's an illusion. Because ever because of the Brexit. And, you, and look at the, the, the leadership you've got. You've got people, black people in this country, in England, that have got British passports being deported. And you want to tell me about, you want to sit here and tell me about there's no racism. Huh? I think you need to watch some videos. Southgate lost us to game 100%. We, we played like Chelsea under Jose. Yeah, Southgate's to blame. Come on, Bailey, you're a logical man. I'm a logical man. I'm a man of colour. And uh, don't try and patronise me or try and suppress me with your nonsense about I'm a logical man. Yeah, I'm logical. I'm logical. Three black players took the penalties. And if I have to show you this again, do I need to see this across social media? Are you talking about being logical? Logical. Logical. I'll talk to you about logical. Logical. Me and you go in the same room together to apply for an interview. Go for an interview. I've got better qualifications than you. I've got more experience than you. 
you get the job. Not because of your qualifications, not because you're experienced, because you're the right complexion. And unless you've had to experience that and deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis, not just in interviews or going for jobs, whether you walk, wherever you are, you're considered a second class citizen, or not even a second class, third, fourth class citizen, seeing people that look like yourself being demonized day in, day out. It's very easy to, to take. When you're privileged, you don't realize how privileged you are, and you know it's never going to get taken away from you. So it is what it is. Clayton Ince was my neighbor for 10 years. Met Stern, Dennis, and Carlos too. Wow. So this, this is a media spin to deflect the loss. No, no, it's not a media spin at all. Nothing to do with media spin. It's a fact. The media are just a cesspit for racism as well. The media are cesspit for racism. <coughs> Every day, you can see a black person commit the same crime as a white person. But a black person is suffering more for it. And, and in time more for it. Shall we talk about Weinstein and Bill Cosby? Can we, we can keep going about a million things where the disparity is clearly there. But if you're white and you're privileged and you don't have a conscience to look back and say, you know what? It's a whole heap of history. We've done a lot of things to these people of colour. That's not been particularly nice. If you've not got a conscience like that and you benefit off the hard work of people who don't look like yourself do you benefit from it if we make things all equal and you're in your job based on your experience based on your know-how not based on your complexion a lot of you would not be in jobs that's a fact i'm not spouting racist i'm just, i'm showing you i'm telling you things that are true in fact So it's okay to sit from your privileged position that you don't have to ever worry about being a second class or third class citizen or ever having to look at, be worried about looking at being looked at for the colour of your skin. And guess what? For your colour of your skin, you're always privileged. Even with religion, you're privileged. Because you go to these other countries, these, these third world countries, and you're treated like gods. Because, you know what, some parts, they see their God as white. And their sons of gods and daughters of gods are white. So you've got that privilege too as well. You've got that privilege too as well. You understand? But that's another conversation for another day. So this racism, this, this, this supremacy thing goes real deep. It goes real deep. Not just in sport, we see it in boxing, we see it in football, we see we see it in media, we see it in music, we see it in movies, it's all around the world. It's there. Racist comes in all colours, that's right. But you tell me, to, uh, to, to counter that, racists with power and control law, how many black people, how many black people all you know that can change law? And that's the thing. Can't change the laws. We have to rely on, you know, those from a privileged position, not like us, to change the laws. No Brexit was any no Brexit was not anything to do with it. Okay, in your opinion. No Brexit is against globalism. They take a knee for political reasons set up they'll sort of get the blame of course of course let's just open it up for debate let's hear what people have got to say institutional racist white privilege england have you gone for wokeness i've gone for woke i don't know about going for woke but i'll tell you something what i feel you could never feel what i feel you could never feel so unless you're prepared to change places 
and give up all the privilege you have, which you can't, then we'll talk about it. But don't, don't try and talk to me like you know me because you don't know me. You see me on YouTube and you have a glimpse of my life. You don't know me. You don't know me. Okay? You don't know me. So don't try and say, don't try and put me in your little box, which I don't fit in. Right? Don't try and put me in your little boxes and keep the little black boy quiet. I've been there and I've had to deal with it. And I'm not doing it anymore. You understand? So don't try that. So if you're going to talk to me, talk to me like an equal. And hear what I have to say and why I feel the way I feel. Right? Don't try and talk to me like you know me because you don't know me. You have an idea of me because of what you see on YouTube and what I choose to show you. But that doesn't mean you know me. You know an element of my life, but you don't know my pain. So don't talk about being woke. It's got nothing to do with that woke. I was fully it was in pain more than before even woke came about. You understand? The challenges I faced, and I'm no different to any other person of color, the challenges that I faced to get to the things I've had to get to, to know the reasons why I've been blocked, it's got nothing to do with me not being good enough. And I've got many examples. That's for another day. Please, don't do that. Sure is. Stop the bollocks. Mate, if you don't like it, sign out. How can any of you be so ignorant and say no to no racism? Exactly. There is racism in the world. Ingram is after clickbait. Well, mate, I'm going to give you the biggest clickbait tonight. We were having a conversation, but when you said that, good night, mate. See you later. Don't want to hear nothing more you've got to say. Yeah, blacks were called yesterday because of the game. Now I'm saying to you that this is the message I got right here. Right here. That was on Snapchat yesterday. Which today was, these ends of losses to Euros. Monday the 12th of July is punishing end day. No, no word about Greenwich or Mount, especially Greenwich, who is no youngster anymore. The gammon prince ex exempt from critique. You're more than welcome to come and follow Scotland, love. No hate. I hate you, brother. I hate you. I just don't. I've got no more time for this. Uh, people that come in and try and spout their racist, institutional racism upon me and talk that nonsense. I don't have to put up with it no more. Do you understand? I won't put up with it no more. Yes, blacks were attacked over a football game. Yep, there's no racism. Shake my head. Racism, when people say that, they're the real racists. Morris, he's a clever man. Not exactly is see how he has been triggered personally. I blame Gaila. Really? Yeah, uh, whatever. It's simple facts. People who say white privilege isn't a thing, I'm in denial of ignorance. No, they're the ones that benefit from it. So, of course, why would you acknowledge something you benefit from? I'm blame the Baylor. Yet you automatically assume I'm Caucasian. Yet, S, uh, talk boxing again. They, there you make, do make a lot of sense. Hey, listen. Let me let you see something else. Because you may be black. Because you may be black. Remember, a lot of the black people sold the black, their own black people out of slaves. So let's not go there. There's a mentality that goes with it. I'm not talking about the color of your skin here. The color of your skin, remember, is the content of your heart. That's what I was always told. The fact of the matter is this. When people don't want to acknowledge it and say, well, there's no racism, I have a problem with that. Or when people come in the room and say, ah, oh, we'll stick to boxing. You're trying to limit my voice on my channel you try and limit my voice on my channel what makes you think what gives you the privilege no no the privilege stops on this channel no 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 you don't come with that privilege on this channel no 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 you take that privilege somewhere else it don't work in bwc and universe doesn't work doesn't work you understand I'm all for unity. I'm all for people coming together 
of the same mindset. I'm all for that, of the same mindset, of the same heart. But I'm not going to sit here and just pretend and say, it didn't happen, there's no racism. Or my life hasn't been affected because of narrow-minded people. Opportunities that I could have had have been blocked because I didn't fit the right complexion. Love that you talk about these issues. Some people don't have the bottle to do it. So yeah, it's a matter. Of, it, it's it's a matter that needs discussing because this can't go on. No, it can't go on. In fact, I was very tempted the other day to play a video about this privilege of whiteness by by, by white people, basically talking about the privilege. I think there's a lack of education on these subjects. There really is, and. Um, when you can just disregard someone else's feelings and emotions just to put your point across, it's pretty ignorant. If we had won them, the social media issue would not have been an issue. No, it would have still been an issue. It still would have been an issue. Example, when Raheem Sterling scored the goal, that he's scoring goals for England, whose face was on the front cover? Not Raheem Sterling. It was Harry Kane. Huh? Please. Please. So you think if England won the Euros, that racism would be all gone? Are you really that deluded? Subjects like this exposes the mindset of people, always surprising. You see, the thing, the, the, the thing about it is, if somebody said I was a racist, I would say that if I don't love myself, then I've got a problem. So I am black. I'm a black man. Can't deny that. And I'm proud of what I am and who I am. And I, and I, and I live every day to be the best person I possibly can be as a spirit, as an individual. Not as a black man, but as an individual. And so, I'm interested in the content of people's hearts, the character. That's what defines a person. Their thought process is what defines a person. As ultimately, it's off their thought process is how they're going to act or react. There massively is facts. You know what? I'm going to drop that video on this channel. I'm going to drop that video on the, I might even drop it today. Drop the video on the channel, uh, Privilege of Whiteness, and put it on so people can sit back and watch it and just learn and just use it as an educational process because I'm sick and tired of it. I really am. It would not be an issue as it as is in the media at the moment. Sky Sports would not be pushing it, it pushing the celebration, would have gone on the screen 24-7. All right, the England cricket team won the World Cup 2020 and the World Cup. Does that change racism? Will it change racism? I tell you, I tell you what, you want to talk about racism, you want to change racism, what about having a black prime minister? How many people in England want to see a black prime minister? How many people think that you could see a black prime minister? If there's no racism in England, fair opportunity for everybody, black prime minister. What about that? Hmm? Black players lost us Euros if they got us further in a tournament, but they never ever say that. They just don't like us. Their true colour shows when England lose. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. This is true England. This is true England. Are you aware of a YouTuber called Young Ferrat? I know the brother very, very, very well. Uh, he was successfully exposing a lot of this over the last five years, yeah? Yeah, I know Young Pharaoh and shout out to you, brother. I hope you keep him well. Yeah, I keep, 
I know them them man's well, well. England dropping great examples to counter, of course. Thank you, Dave. Unfortunately, racism will never be solved. Obama did not solve racism in the USA. Oh, he did. In some cause, he may have made it worse. You know, but the thing is, at least, at least it gave, it gave people of color. It's, it's a little different in America now. It's very different in America because at least you had the civil rights movie. You've got guys like Martin Luther King and and, and um, so many great figures that 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 are there. Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, Farrakhan. There's so many people there you could see and, and, and watch and see that are uh, an inspiration to to people of color. But any people are uh, people in England. Uh, being inspirational figures like that, it's a bit more difficult to see. A bit more difficult to see. Particularly when agenda has been pushed. So it, it's a little different in the USA because at least there's people out there on the front lines you've seen and still on the front lines. Farrakhan on the front lines. You know, but most of these guys get taken out. Pharaoh made exhibits on Glove Gate. Yeah, I did see it. I did see it. I did see it. So I'm very clued up with stuff like that. Very, very clued up. I don't talk about it much because there is no really need to talk about it. But there are issues. And certainly, I will definitely now, I'm more inspired. I was thinking about putting the video out before, but now I think I'm going to put the video out. I think I'm going to definitely put the video out on racism. Um, my background is from cricket, right? So if you ever seen a movie a show called fire in babylon that's a, a really great education that's another video i'm gonna start posting these videos up, up on youtube i'm start putting them up there because they won't monetize them but i'll put them up there for educational purposes because a lot of people just talk without really thinking and it's because of a lack of education because if you know better at least you have the ability to do better you know but um this this sort of, I remember many times uh, you made to feel very small by your school, some sort of school teachers that would look down on you. You don't, you, you, you answer a question correctly and they'd try and make you feel as if you were always less than. And you meet certain people along the way so my, on my journey in sport. <clears throat> that I remember, I'll give you a perfect example. Perfect example. In 2010, 2011, I was uh, I was nominated as a national community champion for the work I've done, doing work across the southeast, uh, southeast so from London and across the southeast of England. And I've set up three, four academies, cricket academies, and I was going into all areas of underprivileged areas where all the areas that were not rich and affluent were more poor and hard to reach young people. When they call hard to reach, you're talking predominantly about, babe, I hate the term, black in the uh, Asian community and the ethnic minorities. I remember, and I did a lot of work there and I could see how the rich kids and the development officers in the particular, particular areas in cricket wouldn't go anywhere near, wouldn't touch the areas of um, underprivileged because they wanted everything to remain lily white and cricket. So I did this and I got lots of uh, support, lots of votes, and I won the National Community Champions Award. And they did a documentary on me that was done on Channel 4, but done by BBC or Channel 4, I can't remember which one it was, but they did a documentary on me. This was seen approximately by 8.5 million homes it was on Sky TV. Yeah. Now, would you believe? Oh, I came third in that list. The person that won came first was cere cere about cerebral palsy. I think the other person was about multiple sclerosis. So I came third in that list of national champions, community champions. They did a documentary. You know. Would you believe? Even at the home of cricket, 
They didn't recognize what I was doing. They didn't recognize it. Didn't want to know. Weren't interested. The media wasn't interested. But there are people who achieve a lot less, who don't look like myself, and who achieve so much. I could never aspire. I could never say to myself, you know what? One day I could be an England cricket coach and, and become an England cricket coach. Never. So imagine that as a young person, striving in the sport that you love to try and get to the top. No, you'll never get there because of the colour of your skin. I could talk about this for ages. Closed doors. Being qualified, being ready to take another qualification. To do my level three. Once I get my level three, that opens me up to international coaching. Inter inter uh, opens me up to international opportunities and coaching at a much higher level. But can I just go and apply for that level three? No. I have to go to the privileged boys to ask and beg and, and kiss us. Can you please put me through for level three? I mean, considering 95% of are in your county teams anyway. So it's not because I'm not good enough. I'm good enough to coach for you in your setup. I'm good enough to be left alone at Lords to be a head coach for the day. I'm good enough for that. But I'm not good enough to go and do level three. But the players that I coach, I'm good enough for. Because that can produce county level players. I'm good enough to pick out 32 clubs across London, 11 players to represent London. I'm good enough for that. But I'm not good enough to go and get a level for. Experience, very experienced. Taking my club from playing. Uh, Second division cricket to top level cricket and beating the top privileged clubs around. Going to Lords and winning trophies. You know, I turn up to Lords and all here's oh, is that Ingram Jones again? From the privileged type. Yeah. I remember once over in Hackney, 32 teams took part in this quick cricket tournament. And two teams that ended up being the teams I coach in school teams now on the day of the final <clears throat> a pretty elderly man came up to me he was quite a well established well to do man I would say and he said to me <clears throat> good afternoon sir I said yeah hi good afternoon how are you sir he says, oh yes well some beautiful cricket being played today sir I said, yes, it is. It's good to see these young people getting the opportunity to play cricket. He says, yes, 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 very good. And uh, the two finals, uh, the plus the final. Who, uh, what are you doing here? Are you uh, collecting the balls? Are you, you know, security here? Or I said, no, I'm the coach for these two teams. <coughs> oh, pardon me. He walks off. That's just a, a snippet of sort of nonsense I had to deal with. Just, 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 just out of it. Am I security? Am I collecting the balls here? Why can't I be a coach? You know, I always remember parents used to say to me, as a black Man, you have to do twice as hard, do twice as hard as everybody else. I quite understood that. For ah, oh, man, you mean? It's true. You have to. You don't have to be twice as good. You have to be ten times as good. Because that's just the way it is. Unless you move away from that. Why did I create BWTF? Because I noticed with the media. All the success I was doing, all the things I was doing within my sport, wasn't being covered. Didn't want to cover it. But I looked just down the road, another club down the road, everything's been covered. As Muhammad Ali would say, it's white, so it's all right. That's just the privilege.
it's not being racist it is what it is and many people of color can understand that right some of my some of my closest friends are white the person that sent me that message is italian yeah again it's not to do with the color of the person's skin but more the content of their heart but it's the ones at the top the ones that have the money and the influence and that can do better but don't do better because of their mindset those are the ones that are the racists those are the ones that can make change and won't they are the racists that you look at Let's keep. It's sad that some see discuss racism like a seasonal weather and comes at different stages. Yet it always there is always there. So it's good that you can educate these people. Yeah, well. Remember that Labour, yeah, Choco Ch Choco Uma. He became a Labour leader probably for one week, and if that, because they realised Labour might win, and that means England will have a black leader, someone that. To themselves, we will not allow this to happen. So they decide to replace. Him. Oh, England! Not. He was a uh, gay, and he said he didn't want that to come out the closet. That's another reason. I said, well, if he becomes prime minister, uh, if he becomes a leader, he said, if I become a leader, then I will get punished for this. He knew it was going to come out, so he wanted to keep his private life quiet. That he wasn't, he was homosexual. But that's his business. What he does behind closed doors. You know what I mean? But the thing is. Michael Portello was openly gay. So what? There's so many people in, in, in within Parliament that are gay. So what? Because he's black. Ah, there's an issue there. Three young men who Mr. Pelley did more than Harry Kane did all night. At least they shot at goal on goal. Ah. Mate. How many great retired black players have no opportunity to manage coach Premier League? They're all pushed to lower there. Yeah, and they say there's no racism. Do you know the FA? The FA of the biggest full part of the French, full of shit, the FA. If FA really want to talk about kick out racism, what about um Paulins? Never mind Paulins. What about that black manager? I can't remember his name was who was with Blackburn Rovers. Took him over and they wanted about an eight or ten a game unbeaten run, and he got sacked. Huh? If the FA want to make a statement about black players and black managers, give black managers that are give them the opportunity, just like they flipping give bloody Mark, not Mark Hughes, what's his name, Steve Bruce. Every time he gets sacked from one job, he gets another job. Why don't they give John Barnes an opportunity? Well, I'm not a great job. I'm not because I think he's a pacifier. That's the you know there. Great player. Just, I don't like to hear John Barnes speak because he's a pacifier. However, it would be nice to see not just black player managers, I'd like to see some Asian managers as well in the Premier League. Black and Asian managers, let's see them in the Premier League. Let's see them as managers. I mean, there's some useless now English managers that are around that constantly keep getting jobs and constantly keep getting relegated. That they keep getting jobs. So, why can't some black managers become, man become managers? Look out, Lampard and Gerard have got jobs. Huh? Lampard and Gerard. Can't say Lampard was a success, can you? But he got a job. Lampard, huh? Hurricane's an embarrassment. Well, have you ever seen uh, Jane Elliott's blue eyes, brown uh, blurred blue, blue eyes? Studies documentaries on BBC One years ago, very interesting. Well, there was one, there was one where they had, I haven't seen it, but I'm definitely going to look into it. It's never enough. Haha. -ha. What a joke. Yeah, it was a joke. That was a complete joke. Yeah, my mom always used to say that to me, and I never understood as youngster till I started growing up and seeing the world for what it is. Yep. How, how many black children? or black people 
that watch this channel can put their hand up and say their parents said to them that to be twice as good as means it's not equal Ruby, noble cause, I empathise, B, but life's not fair. A breakaway cricket link for Caribbean British is the way forward. L would likely be popular. The asking for equality weakens competition overall. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, yeah? Let me go deep on this. A few years ago, the MP of Tottenham, black man, like myself, and I wanted to go and I wanted to re revamp or bring back the Harringay Cricket College. Harringay Cricket College used to have young people who go to school at the college, play cricket, end up going playing for counties, and still get their education at the same time. Yeah, that was Harringay Cricket College back in the early 80s mid 90s that was when caribbeans were really into cricket really really into it you know the west indies were a major force in world cricket you know and they were beating everybody you know the, the invincible west indies um and i went to this mp i said could you imagine that being redone putting some money into it and rebuilding the Harringay Cricket College. All the young people, Broadwater Farm, Tottenham, Hackney. I was Hackney, at one point I was Hackney cricket captain. You know, so we were getting young people off the streets and getting to play cricket. I was working across Hackney, went all the way up to, I can't remember the place again. But basically it was the biggest estate in Europe, North London way, not Edgware, not Hendon. Might have been Hendon, might have been Hendon, but anyway. So, on this estate, on this estate, it's the biggest estate in, in Europe, they say, it's in London, North London. And I remember being there, and I remember being, I entered this estate. All it had on this estate, there was a police station on the estate, and all sorts of burnt that car on the estate. And that's just all we used to go there and just bring young people, and, and young people who was not in education try and get them back, encourage them to play sport and cricket and get them back into education. But majority of them were black. There were some white guys, but they, they were underprivileged. They, they were, they were, you know, they were from a, a rougher neighborhood. You understand? So, but I remember working projects like that. And I use that as a reference point to this member of parliament I said don't worry i'll do what i can to help out you never ever got back to me ever never ever so just because you're black unless you do something with the power you have you know but then you see him on tv anytime there's something that kicks off in tottenham race related he's flying in there about it it's people like that and there's a few others within parliament that look black they look black but they don't help the cause, they make matters worse. So when I see him get up in Parliament and making his brand bravado statements, I look back at the time where he could have done something proactive in his own community and he didn't lift a finger. Didn't lift a finger. So it's not just I'm digging out people who are white. There's my own as well. I don't make things any easier. Very, very typical are the upper class white old times it is what it is it's what they are it's what they are that's called privilege that's what it is john barnes will never speak out for black people not that i'm aware of no they never speak out for black people. of course he won't the fa don't want to make a statement all the racial team hope is such stuff it's all fake platitudes come on racism will never be solved well the one way it can be solved, start you can start is by re-educating by getting black managers and making black managers win the premiership. That's why I do things like in my on my uh, FIFA or my Pro Evolution Soccer, an all African side, a black manager. 
you know i have to do these things in a game because the reality is it ain't happening could you imagine a black ma manager winning the premiership or black manager winning the champions league can you imagine that so it's not gonna happen mate well why is it not gonna happen my point exactly yeah me the problem is we have been trying to fit into their system for so long when the system is conspiring against us there's fear is doing is us doing our own thing that's the only way in my opinion nothing will change and even when you try and do your own thing this is what i can't stand about them when you try and do your own thing they want to get themselves involved in your business that's what it is you think that running bwtm is easy uh bwtm is not easy and i'm getting people conspiring against me all the time you think you think it it's, it's easy, huh? Uh, saw Campbell struggle to get a managed job. Very, very sad. Brilliant play back in the day. But people that saw Campbell don't, I don't think, do themselves any favours anyway. So, uh, they're very funny to me. And all these big companies, they say they fight against race, etc. Because I bet if you look at the higher up staff, etc., you barely see any players of people of colour being represented. And even if you did see people higher up, that are being represented they're not going to speak out because they'll lose their job because they're more interested in their pay and their title i'm from n18 i know of him ah they see what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i don't want to call his name because i don't want to give him any attention he knows ah. john barnes has never spoken out for black people not that way of to my knowledge no he hasn't these they the type of people i'll call the cover-ups they may be black but they do really care for the, the cause or want to help or they want to just make up the numbers that's one thing i find in england there are people that are pushing for that direction pushing forward but there's a huge majority there's a huge amount of them that are blockers that are um happy to carry on the narrative of racism because it keeps them employed yeah they look like me keeps them employed keeps them a job keeps the lifestyle you know as long as their family their kids are okay it's fine yeah exactly that fool is now working for radio ldbc i think yeah him him well there you go black and peace they're selected they're selected before elected for a reason oh yeah of course they are there's a few of them i've written i wrote to a few of them and they are just about issues unless the camera's on their face these people are lights camera action the only time they will respond is when the camera's on their face otherwise behind closed doors they don't care so true so that's of course it's true the problem is getting a ua for license is so expensive nobody can afford it that's part of the problem that's part of it they know that people of color unless they're in very good jobs it's very difficult for them to, or they're sponsored it's very difficult for them to get those badges but in cricket it's worse it's worse racing than cricket because for you to get a level three which i'm trying to get right i will get my level three now because i found a way of how to get it but to get a level three in england i have to go to one of these uh selected assessors and all i have to say is uh no do you know the excuse for why i didn't get a level three do you want to know why i didn't get excuse the excuse i didn't get forget my level three in england i'll tell you what it was it wasn't because i wasn't good enough it was because the england captain was to get in it the england captain was on the course that's what the head of cricket told me they told me because the england captain who was on tour in south africa when the hell would the england captain who was andrew strauss at that time when would he have had time to do a level three in coaching he's england captain he plays for Middlesex. So if he's not touring around the world or playing cricket in England, 
for his county. Where the hell is he going to get time to do level three? That is like advanced coaching, international coaching, that level of coaching you can do. Mm -hmm. When are you going to get time for that? Those sort of crap excuses they would give me. Exactly, mate. Even when we do our thing, they can't help but intervene. The deep obsession and hate they have for us will be understood when blacks are educated on their real history. Uh -huh. If you don't know where you're from, you don't know where you're going to. You've got to know your history. The real history. Not the history they try and teach you and brainwash you. J, uh, J. Elliot's Blue Eyes, Brown Eyes documentary. Watch it. The UK version. It's on YouTube. Trust me. Watch it, bro. <coughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. I will start putting these videos out there for people to watch. Particularly by uh, my friends outside of England, those that are in Africa, that think that they come to England and they think that it's a, it's a, it's a golden road. They think that, oh, I'll come to England, I'll get a job, and it'll just be easy like that. you got to work with these people. I don't know where you think work. you got to work with these people. And you got to end up playing the game. You know, when the racist comments are made, you go, eh, smile and laugh it off. When they go and kind of touch your hair, to examine your hair like you are some A and B. Oh, why do you do your hair like that? Well, your hair is so nice. Let me touch it. Ooh, why do you put that cream in your hair? Stuff like that. Watered down history taught in the school, of course. Most white people don't give a F about us. Either they don't give it, or they, they feel or they're, or they're educated not to. But I remember when I was younger, much, much younger, my dad doesn't have this opinion now, but when I was about... When I was about eight or nine years old, primary school time, I'd say, I remember stuff like coming home from school and wanting to bathe in milk or, or trying to put milk on my skin like in, in, in the... Um, in the in the bathroom because i was black and kids that were white were saying why are you that color skin why are you black oh and you'd feel really bad you'd feel really bad you know you were less than you were not getting treated like everybody else so there's stuff like that that very much still you're with and i remember my dad saying to me when i was around that age he said to me any white boys don't like have I do what you have hang on any white people but my dad said that you know but then you remember also my dad was around the time where you know even in the 80s the 80s when the cricket was on where black people were getting hosed down with water and using dogs on black people yeah England this is England go look at it so of course when he when when a man like that has seen so much stuff has happened you know, and it's always been done by a, a different, another race of people. Very nice, thank you. But another race of people. Of course your mind's going to change, but that's not like that, that now. It was like that. But times change and people, you know, find they see good in others, you know. Among, oh my God, the amount of times I've been asked, can I touch your hair? I think it's a millionaire, like we have got some alien hair or something. The amount of times I was told, I'm not racist, mate. I've got black mates. You know, I mean, even. Yes, Cizella. There we go. Look at Cizella. Cizella, I've known Cizella for, God knows, I've known Cizella for so many years. Cizella's white and. We are in Tottenham together. You understand? Sellers an excellent coach. You know, but never once have we ever 
ever been a conversation about race and color like that you understand oh my god yes your father is a wise man he's thinking of your safety the interrogation integration is used as a weapon against our own common peeps please have heard that line too many times i know oh i'm not racist i've got a black girlfriend yeah i've heard that as well i mean To be fair, I'll be honest, when working in Tony Communities with Susanna, I don't think I ever once felt any form of racism. I, I, I don't think I ever felt that, you know? The black guys and the white guys rolled together. It, was, it wasn't like that. It just wasn't. I never felt that in that community. I never ever felt that. I never walked through Tottenham feeling that racism, you understand? I never felt that. Or through Hackney, I never felt that. You understand? It's when you go out of London, you start going to places like Sussex, where the majority is more is more uh, white than black. You start going out to all those areas where there's less black and there's more rich and affluent areas. You know, which is what they're trying to do with London now. Make it more even more expensive for people of color to stay so the labor vote goes and you've got the conservative vote so these races can stay in power that's how it goes that's unfortunately it is what it is so it's just not what it comes back to the point it's not just about uh the the england football team and those three black players lost us to euros you didn't like him in the first place you didn't like him in the first place they're never good enough. The media will never think you're good enough. Just watch the media. Watch how they just constantly, over and over and over again, just demonise all the time. Just having black friends or black government does not give you the power to start saying names like the N-word at will, describe us in certain ways, yeah. I, I, I get it totally. I get it. And there's a fair few races that watch this channel as well. I can tell you that now, fact, fact, because, you know, they won't engage in a conversation. They'll make their comment and they'll disappear, but they won't engage in a conversation because if they engage and have a real conversation with them, a real conversation with them, it exposes what they're really about. Exactly. They didn't like us for, in the first place. And the thing that happened yesterday was just a perfect chance for them to get out of their truth it is yeah that's it that's it that's true that's true that's true you know even watch this even when you when you fill it out when you fill out a application form you're applying for a job yeah and you put down your ethnicity black caribbean or black other they say, oh, it's just, it's just for, uh, well, they call it, it's just for, uh, for us to see a census. Crap. It's no census. Let's make sure that your black ass don't get a job. For the most part. You understand? So they can, oh, all right, he's black. Let's move that on. Next person. Next. Look at these headhunters. So it is. Saka is a young man who stepped up for his country. Where were all the other players? He knew the risk, but stepped up anyway. Stand up and applaud. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he was forced to take that penalty. I don't know. It's sad. It, it, it's sad that when you, I saw those players step up and miss the first thing that came to my mind, which is how much race should be they're about to get rather than thinking about the football. Yep, I knew. The minute Rashford stood up to take that penalty, I said to myself, if you miss this, if you miss this penalty, son, you're done. You're done. That was it. You're done. Babe. A lot of the BM are getting fast-tracked jobs too still. 
Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there is that fast tracking business as well. A room still will get hateful at stepping on either. You can't win, LOL. It's true. Exactly. LOL, it's a joke, man. Listen, and it's two ways to work with this, right? <clears throat> if people are smart, so they think, okay, we're giving black people the opportunity. Yeah? But they give black people the opportunity, they're not competent at the job. They're not good at the job. So, of course, they fail. They say, look, we give these black people a chance. They give them a chance, and look what happens. Bloody useless. I knew we'd miss, and I love Rashi. Yeah, I just looked at it. Yeah. As, as he went to take that, I thought, oh, here we go. Here we go. As he went as he, as he he went to the penalty, oh, here we go. Why wear the shirt if that's what they have to put up with? That's it. I wonder how the premiership, new premiership season is going to go now. So Sancho and Grealish. Grealish is going to make it, I think it's 100 million they're going to pay for. Grealish, 150 million they paid for Grealish, and he didn't take a penalty. Sancho took a penalty, and he's on his way, I believe he's on his way to Man United. I wonder how those two transfers are going to go. Hmm? OMD, mate. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. So, it is. Our age group has to have, a, have a more violent stand with different degrees of racism. Some young bucks don't know. No, but you see, BG London, you see, there those people have a consciousness and understanding of what's going on. I said, if you know better, you do better. And then there are other people who just turn blind eye and just come and start just walk into a room and start talking without thinking. There is a dummy guy, sounds Somali, woking, work, working in NHS found lines. It's crazy. Oh dear. No doubt we'll bear the brunt of it more than Greenwich. Of course, and Greenwich didn't even take a penalty. Exactly. Uh, I don't even talk about Greenwich. It's nothing. He's the nation's golden boy right now. Of course he is. I saw smoke on Sacco's face before he took the penalty. It's like he couldn't wait to upset an ungrateful nature with systematically racist towards him. You wonder, you wonder if they missed those penalties on purpose. You do wonder if they actually want Mr. Penalties on purpose. Like, right, after that. You don't appreciate us. See, the other thing is. Gareth Southgate. The way he was talking, the way he was being, it's like he was actually trying to build a different type of England that was acceptance, accepting of black players and white players working together. Now, there is a difference between acceptance and tolerance. Acceptance would be, I don't care the colour of your skin. All I care about is your football ability. And if we win together, we win together. And if we lose, and if we, lose we lose together. That's acceptance. Tolerance, however, is a different situation. Tolerance would be, right, you better play well, you black so-and-so. And if you don't play well, well, I'm going to abuse you because you're black. That's tolerance. Only conditionally, tolerance, conditionally, a certain amount I will accept you until I really let you know how I really feel about you. Controlled hatred. I'd love that, but highly doubt it. They are, they are professionals. No way Saka missed on purpose, LOL. Nah, you don't want that. So then you're going to get all the death threats and stuff. But look, it's nothing new with England and death threats. You remember Beckham got death threats as well, so he got it. Beckham got his fair share as well, so I guess from some way you can kind of understand what's going on there. 
I think from this, I think from now on, moving forward, maybe these conversations need to be had more often to open debate and open conversation about how we can move forward. I think from my end, my perspective as a, a person working within media is to present more, more opportunities to out, inspire, educate, and empower. So I guess, I guess, I suppose, it's all well and good me sitting on a high horse saying all the things that are wrong. I'm the kind of person that says, all right, these are the things that need to be corrected. What am I going to do as part of media? So what I can do is start to put out educational videos where people can start to watch and learn and see historical events. I think that might be an idea. In terms of footage, Gareth had a decent plan utilising the extra stars and players brought on for specific roles. Came on stuck with subs versus Italy. Okay. They, they crucified Beckham with death threats, etc. I love how Tyrone Mings also was, has also called out that, that clown Pretty Patel being shocked about the racing, yet was against the players taking knee in order to combat it. There you go. There you go. There you go. And I want to see what's going to happen now with all those people that were rioting and, and taking part in those racist behaviour. That's what I want to know. So I hope you can stand with me as we decide to put those videos out there, start to put those educational videos out there. I'll try and find that one on what the benefits or the, the privilege of whiteness. I'll try and find that video on BWTM and uh, we start to play that video out there as, and a few others as well, like uh, Firing Babylon and quite a few others. I think I will start doing that because I think only by putting the information out there, the educating information out there and showing the racism by people that look like themselves and look at yourselves in the mirror, then I think that would, might be a, a way forward. I think that will happen. I, I was talking to one of my friends um, the other day. I think it's late for speaking to actually. I said that we might be an idea to do it. So I think I'm going to do it now. That's going to be the turning point for BWTM. That foreign secretary, she's a two-faced cow proper. Moving forward. When you pick up your paper the next time, your Sun newspaper, your Daily Mail newspaper, your Telegraph newspaper, the Metro, and you see yourself as a person of colour being reflected in those papers as being you're capped, being assassinated, or you've been, you know, the, the, the disparity between what you're being presented at or your people like you are presented like versus the privilege are presented like. Use that as toilet paper, but don't use it to educate yourself because you, you start reading that stuff and you become just as part, just as bad as the problem is. You have to push back against the stuff and investing alternative media, people that are going to give you a balanced view, people that call it as it is, with a balanced view, not trying to use race as a way to say one race is better than another race. The way you say no is to keep your money in your pocket. You understand? And don't invest in these people that constantly are putting out negative vibes and part of trying to cause a race war in the UK, which is where I think they're going to, they're trying to do anyway. Integration is doomed to fail. Yep. We can only, we can only but try. The integration is doomed to fail for those who don't want to integrate. And if those that don't want to integrate, it's fine. Let them not integrate. That's fine. But if they don't want to integrate, that's fine. But I say, if you don't want to integrate, keep out of our business. And let those who want to integrate, integrate. And those who don't want to integrate, stay in your lane. Simple. And by the way, I'm just going to end with this. Go and do your research on black 
Wall Street. That's when we went to do our own and see what happened there. Right. I hope this has been an interesting uh, conversation. I think it's a pretty real conversation. I think uh, some people might have been offended by what I said tonight. I don't care because it's okay for you to have a racist perspective and I should put up with it. So I'm pushing back to that and say, no, you're not going to control me. No, you're not going to tell me who I am. No, you're not going to define me by your small perspective of who I am. You're not going to try and belittle me. You're not going to try and try and uh, interfere with what I'm doing. I keep doing what I'm doing. And I'm still here. Exactly. Why, if they are so much, why is it so hard for them to stay out of business? It's control, isn't it? It's control. The master wants control. And when a slave gets out of hand, and they get bring the slave back. That's what it is, control. Absolute control. Fascinating video. Bro, my brother, I love you. You're a good man. And Leif is what is as white as they come. But he's a good man. You understand? It's the content of this brother's heart. You understand? Content of this brother's heart. Great show. Brother, respect. The England team won as a team and lost as a team. And that's how I view it. See, I, I am accepting of black and white. I'm not tolerant. What I am tolerant of is privileged racist people. That's what I've become tolerant of. And, and my tolerance is little to none now. Make sure you watch the UK J. Elliott documentary piece. You know what? I might even play it on BWTM. I might even play it on, if I can get it, I might play it on BWTM. Yes, great show. I might play it on BWTM. Thank you so much. I might play it on BWTM just to see it. And watch it. And New York can say, tell me what you think about it afterwards. Right. We'll do, we'll do a watch along. Okay. This has been BWTM Sports Gaming. <sighs> I hate talking about such toxic, but it's sport. It's part of sport, unfortunately. And uh, if anyone thinks that just an England team winning the Euros resolves our racism issues, it's a lot deeper than that. Take care. <laughs>